All right. Welcome to the Palace Room East. Uh, your presenter today here is going to be Michelle Martis. And uh, here's a little bit about her, <laughs> since she did not give us a bio. Mm. Michelle is an, American an, is an American accordionist. She was the first female accordion player to lead a Zydeco band. Her music is an eclectic mix of R&B, Caribbean, and Cajun. Though the presence of her accordion always keeps it traditional. So here is Michelle giving her presentation. I w because I didn't write my own bio, I was hoping they would actually write something nerdy about me, but the fact that they put that I play the accordion and I really do um, makes me feel good. Actually, I don't play the accordion. A little bit about me. Um, I coach tennis for a living, somewhat, and I, I also teach Pilates. I'm a Pilates instructor. But more so than that, I'm more into um, learning about movement, human body, anatomy. And so today, my presentation is going to be Pilates, quote unquote, for calming cubicle injuries. Basically, I'm not, if anyone here knows anything about Pilates, anyone? You can raise your hand. Yes, you do? OK. So I like that. Um, what I do is not strictly Pilates. So I do more rehabilitation based on what someone's issues are not just taking you through choreography and not looking at what your issues are. And if you can, just hold your questions till the end, and I hope that you have some. I've done this presentation on my own. It's taken me an hour and a half. It's also taken me 25 minutes. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the basic postural issues that can come from leading more of a sedentary life, especially for those of you who work behind the computer for most of your day. Um, and I just want to to warn you a little bit. Some people are uh, queasy when it comes to anatomy. And I, I don't really have gross anatomy, but I do have some graphic pictures. And if you don't want to look at it, you can kind of turn your head. Um, so before I kind of go on to anything, I want to talk a little bit about movement from past to present. And when I think about uh, how movement has changed throughout the years, I usually think of the difference that we don't actually um, we don't farm anymore, really. Not everyone has their own garden where they're doing labor every day. Most of us just go to the supermarket, pick something off the shelf, and drive home. So we don't have this kind of uh, global movement, meaning like using your whole body, um, whether or not you're sowing seed or loading bags of grain, this back to front rotation and front to back. More of what we do now is, is typing, driving, sitting and watching TV, gaming. So it's a lot of just very simple movement uh, more local, so meaning just fine motor skills, just your hands. You're not loading something and using your whole body to move. <coughs> so I kind of use this analogy of the difference between loading bales of hay onto a wagon, which was obviously 100 years ago or so, maybe not, and then just typing on a keyboard. So increase in technology, um, I think, is basically what happens is when there's an increase in technology, there's a decrease in movement. So for those of you who have a desk job, um, the more you're sitting at your computer and just the more that you're sitting, the less you're actually moving in a, in a, global, um, in a global movement sense. <coughs> so when you sit for long periods of time, sometimes um, you'll have these postural issues that I'm going to go through. And why, how do these postural issues come about? So before I get into all that, why they happen, um, I want to talk about something that's very important. Um, you've probably heard about it. I don't know if you've read about it or anything, but I hope you have. It's the body-mind connection. So um, whenever you do a movement, even if it's just uh, brushing your teeth, you're actually thinking about what you're doing, whether it's I'm brushing from right to left or you're just doing the movement, there is a connection between um, the body and mind. <coughs> so this is one of my favorite uh, paintings by um, an artist whose name is Alex Gray. Um, I had a kind of the luxury to complete a dissection for the use of furthering my knowledge of anatomy, and he was in my class. And I love this painting because it kind of shows <clears throat> this person sitting here, first of all, it shows all the detail of anatomy, which is I find beautiful and amazing, but it also shows this person's mind, their aura, and then all these lines con con connecting them with outer space, or I should say space in general. 
So what really is your body-mind connection? What, like, what does that mean? <laughs> I like this um, painting, as, uh, I should say, image as well. It's by Frank Netter, who does a lot of anatomy drawings. And it shows the physical connection between your head and, head and body. And so there's your veins, um, skeletal system, nervous system. But there's that physical connection where your head is sitting on your body. So what are some examples of the mind-body connection or reaction? Um, I'm sure you've probably heard of the fight or flight syndrome. If you are in a dangerous situation, you have to decide whether or not you have to stay and fight or run and flee. Also, other um, mind-body connections are between stress and emotions. Sometimes if you don't deal with an emotional situation, let's say you're in a fight with your, your boyfriend or work is really stressing you out, that can sometimes tax your body without you knowing it. Because if you're not dealing with that emotional situation, the only way that you will end up dealing with it is when it manifests in your body, usually in the form of pain or tension. And then the body-mind reaction is if someone, let's say, punches you in the arm, you say, ow, that's just your nervous system telling you that something happened. <laughs> if you don't feel that, that's probably a problem. Um, so moving along to where I'm going with this is awareness, just being aware. What does that really mean? In Webster's Dictionary, it's having or showing realization, perception, or knowledge. So when I think about it, it's like knowing what your habits are. What do you do day to day that can lead to these uncomfortable um, postural problems? Do you slouch in your chair? Do you stare at your computer screen for long periods of time without refocusing your eyes? Simple things like, do you drink enough water? And when I mean water, I mean water. I don't mean um, coffee or tea even, um, just straight, pure water. And as weird as it sounds, do you breathe? <coughs> Excuse me. So why is breathing so important? <laughs> Becoming aware of how you breathe and what you're doing will make you more present staying more in the moment, more aware, having more knowledge of what you do. And I like the traditional Chinese saying of, you're living because you have a breath. It's so basic and so straightforward, just explains itself. Um, my recommendation always is, if you do anything, breathe. For me, I'm speaking up in front of you, and I always forget to breathe since I'm speaking so fast and a little nervous. But, um, and then for all the exercises, I will always cue breathing. So the other thing I meant to mention today is that people will actually volunteer and come up and, and do some of the exercises, so don't, yeah, so don't leave. Um, so here's your anatomy of breathing, your lungs, <clears throat> trachea, and, and your diaphragm. And if you ever even start to think about it just now, it's how do you breathe? Do you even think like through your mouth, in and out your mouth, or in through your nose, out through your mouth? I'm sure you've heard that. Uh, and then how do you think you should breathe? Um, I like sometimes when I'm working with someone and I said, okay, take a deep breath, and then they're just like <sighs> And I don't understand exactly what they're doing because it looks a little tense and stressed out. So I like <laughs> this image of Godzilla. Um, and how people think about breathing, just all of a sudden I'm like, okay, take a deep breath. <sighs> like, oh my God, don't spaz out on me. Just take a deep breath and, and get more centered. And I like this because it has anatomy for me. <clears throat> and then Godzilla with his forceful breathing of fire. And that's probably not the way you should breathe. So even as you're sitting in your chair, you can, you can try this, and no one's really going to look at you funny because they can't hear what you're doing. You can just practice inhaling without making a noise. So if you inhale and you don't make a noise, if you hear your breathing, it's, you're constricting your nasal passage. You're not getting enough air in. And you're not getting this kind of like recovery breath. So when you inhale, think about relaxing your nostrils, as strange as that sounds, but it will lead you to take a, a deeper and fuller breath. So here's a breathing exercise that you can do even just sitting in your chair. Um, you can pick a point on the screen, uh, e any letter or even just you know, one of the bullets, and then what you need to do is zoom in as much as you can this is something that you can do at your desk without, um, but I recommend not looking at your screen just because you're already looking at it all the time. Excuse me. So focusing in on a point and zooming in as much as you can. So you'll zoom in probably for like five or seven seconds and zoom in as much as possible until you can't zoom in anymore. And then what you start to do is open up your peripheral vision. 
So your peripheral vision is what you can't really focus on around you. So when you start to open up your peripheral vision, don't move your eyes. Stay focused in on that point and keep zooming in. And hopefully, this is one thing that I like doing with people when I have them on an unstable surface. What starts to happen, their breathing starts to settle out. And uh, it also really helps your balance. So breathing and balance also directly related. So if you do notice a change in breathing, that's great. I, I think sometimes it takes a little bit of practice of being like, oh, what's my peripheral vision? What do I need to zoom in on? And how can I not think of anything else at this time? Just keeping it really, really simple. Okay, so moving down to, so we're starting with breathing, which I think is most important, <clears throat> and then moving on to your eyes. You need your eyes to do basic function, everything from day to day, um, typing, looking at what you're doing, when you're writing, anything. Um, and staring at your computer for long periods of time can also change your breathing pattern, and also you get this kind of tunnel vision of where you're just staring at something, and all these things start to happen, this posture starts to creep up on you, and you're a little tired. Before you know it, you've been looking at your computer screen for like three or four hours without moving at all. And I know this because I used to work in graphics long ago. <laughs> so this is a picture of the connect connective tissue that surrounds your eyes. Um, the goal of connective tissue is kind of like this, um, I think of it when you take a cotton ball and you stretch it out and it starts to like get all stringy, that's connective tissue. You want your connective tissue to be more fluid-like instead of like sticky and gel-like. So that's one of the reasons why it's really important to drink. Um, and when you don't move your eyes, it starts to kind of stiffen up. And most of the time when people say, oh, my muscles are so sore, it's really just your connective tissue that's very tight. Um, I like to think of connective tissue of the casing. Like your muscle is the, the actual meat of like a sausage and, your, and the connective tissue is the casing. So sometimes when the casing gets tight, it's gonna feel like your muscles are tight, but it's not really the case most of the time. So for, for an eye exercise, one of my favorite ones is to, the goal is to stretch the fascia that's around your eyes, so stretching out this connective tissue. And I like to think of having a clock that's right behind my head. And all you're gonna do is look in front of you and then look straight up at 12 o'clock and then start to go around the clock really slowly and you can say it in your head, 12, one, two, going and looking towards the outermost um, regions of your vision. And it can be very intense, but we'll try that a little bit later. Um, so that's a really, really simple one. You'll just go around one way and then around the other. It can feel a little bit intense and anytime something feels too stressful or too intense, you can always back off. I always recommend that. And moving on to your neck or neck and head. Um, I like this picture because I think it's so self-explanatory. Um, people always say, oh, straighten your back and sit up tall. And, and what does that really mean? Well, if for long periods of time you're sitting like this, you will actually end up with your head going forward, basically hanging. And it actually has a very simple name called forward head, head syndrome. And what happens was, is this, I'm not gonna go into it because it's a little intense, but uh, the deep front line becomes shorter. So your deep front line runs from basically the base of your neck but in front and your throat all the way down to your feet. And when you're sitting like this, you start to like get this curved position, kind of hunchbacky. And if I can get a volunteer, yes, come on. Um, most people, I think, do most people have rolly chairs at work? Or do you have stationary chairs at all? Rolly only? All right, well, this will be kind of funky to do with a, with a chair on wheels, but um, you can try. I would suggest if you do that, that when you're gonna, you're gonna come be here. So what you're gonna do is get, this is gonna be on the chair. So you're gonna have to walk your feet out you want me to demo really quickly? So that way you can do it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit at the end of your chair, and I hope I don't lose my mic, but you're gonna come all the way forward. So just your shoulders are resting on your chair. Ah, this is why the rolly's bad. This is why the rolly's bad. But if you have a rolly chair, just make sure that your knees are up against the wall. 
And I know this looks really strange, but what you're doing is you're getting yourself in a different relationship to gravity. Blinded. Um, if you're always like this, you want your head to lay back. That's why it's so great to sleep for a while. So you're going to come a little bit more up. More, more, more. There you go. Good. And just hanging out here, your hands are going to come up to the back of the chair, just on the top, like this. Yes. And sometimes this can be really intense for people, especially if they do have a little bit of forward head syndrome. So what you want to do here is you can close your eyes if you want. You're just, everyone's watching you. OK. <laughs> You're fine. So when you inhale, just think about relaxing your nose and inhaling, keeping it super quiet. But then also think about how long you can um, make your breath good. And then this is, you can stay here just for 30 seconds. It's not um, anything major. But the other option you have is to drop your pelvis to the ground really slowly. Really, really, really slowly. Yes. So this starts to become more intense, right? And you won't, probably won't go all the way to the ground, but you'll probably take like a slow 10 second count to work your way down to the ground and make sure that you're breathing just till there. And you don't have to go all the way. And then you're going to inhale again. And then press through your heels and raise your pelvis up. Where do you feel that the most? I don't know. That's OK. I mean, sometimes you might have to go through it 10, 20 times, not in the same day, but over a course of weeks or months. And then you'll start to feel uh, really in your knees, actually. OK, can you toes pointed to me? OK. So what you're doing is letting the base of your head rest against, um, you're just changing the relationship of gravity and also moving your spine, which is still throughout most of the day. Thank you. That's good. And you can come out however you like. Thank you, Kat. Yay, clap it up. All right, so that was basic. Oh, I'm glad that they blacked out his eyes. I don't know who it is, but um, you can see how it kind of looks. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look comfortable. Um, so that's just taking you through that. <clears throat> and next, we're going to move on to hands, which I think are also really important, because you spend a lot of time on your keyboard or writing. And for anyone who does modeling, you're using those really small tools. Um, it can be really kind of hard on your hands. The other thing that um, I see a lot is, I'm from the New York area, and I see guys going to the city all the time on their Blackberries. And I just know that at a certain point, they're just going to have these like really like kind of lobster claw hands. It's going to be really uncomfortable. So you don't want to overuse your thumbs, but you can't really get away from that, especially if you do have a job that's um, very technologically based. So the next two exercises we're going to do, I need another volunteer, someone who's not scared. Yeah. OK, next. next. Don't be scared. So really simple. What's your name? James. Hi. OK, so you're going to sit here. And of course, I have tennis balls out the wazoo. Um, and so you can do this easily at your desk. Uh, I'm sorry? You don't? Well, you can get any kind of ball that's of a similar size. Uh, you can get like a pinky ball or, I don't know, Toys R Us. I'm sure you could find some. So the idea is to have your elbows slightly wider than your rib cage. And you're going to come and sit a little bit more forward. And Oh, did you? Oh, no, no, no. Your whole body, not just your head. Yes, you as a person, not just, not just this. So hands are going to be open, and the, your hands, the backs of your hands are going to um, rest on the. So your elbows are going to be a little bit wider, and backs of your hands are going to rest on the tennis balls like this. Exactly. So elbows stay super wide, and the most important thing is to make sure that you're not keeping your shoulders by up by your neck, and so, so right here. Make sure that your hands are super wide, so you're going to spread out your fingers like crazy. And then you're going to reach, think about reaching your thumb towards the table and without moving your elbows, so just moving some of your thumb. And it might be a little bit better if your elbow's resting. Is this resting on the? No. OK, so you might have to, oh, geez. I'm so sorry. OK, so this is going to reach like crazy. It's harder than it looks. It's mm. coordination. Mm -hmm. Coordination, but also. You might feel a little bit different. So think about your thumb is going to reach out super wide. Anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. OK, how, are you breathing? OK, yes. 
good. So you hold that for 20 seconds if you can manage, and you can do it twice. And then when you come out of it, you're good. When you come out of it, I just like to loosen up the wrist so you're going to interlace fingers. Come ta, like this. Copy. Oh, oh, but you're going to do this first in between. And then you're going to, yeah, a little coordination. However you like. There's no right or wrong way. They're just, they're just, they're just my, my way. Um, and then you're going to come back and do it again. But you don't have to do that right now. Thank you so much. Bravo. All right. OK. And then the next one, which is also hands. Do you want to do this one? No? OK. All right. This one's, this one's my all-time fave. So both of these exercises, and you're going to be standing for this one. And you can come here. What's your name? Naomi. Naomi, hi. So um, this is all for kind of helping with carpal tunnel syndrome and just the overusing of your thumbs. Carpal tunnel is when you, your carpal tunnel is actually here. This is physically the carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel syndrome is the narrowing of that tunnel, which can create um, numbness, tingling, uh, or sharp pains, depending. Um, so just that impingement on, on the nerve running through your carpal tunnel. So you're going to stand. You can do this at your desk. This is my favorite one because it's probably the most intense. Um, and basically invert your hands so your fingertips are facing you. Whichever, and you can do one, one arm at a time. And the most important thing is like I'm hyperextended in my joints a little bit, so make sure that you don't go to here. When you do this, make sure you keep your elbow kind of uh, slightly bent. And if you have to, you can bring your body weight more forward. So the idea is to keep your fingers super wide. So this is, yeah, there you go. And then you're going to get your palm down, if you can, and slightly bend your elbow. Yeah. All right, and then all, so simple. All you're going to do is pick up one finger at a time and hold it for about four or five seconds. Just lift it up. Yeah, just lift it up for a little bit. And then you're going to go ring finger four or five seconds and see if you can get your palm all the way down. So this would be at the base. Good. And then middle finger, index finger, and then your thumb. And your thumb, you want to pull it more out to the side. So think about pulling more out to the side. And you're going to lift it for about I'd say five to seven seconds, a little bit longer, because that's really the goal is to open up this passageway. And then when you come off, make sure you don't just stand up and come off. Think about peeling your hand off your desk really slowly. How's that? It's a little intense, yeah? <laughs> so it's a little intense. Um, like I said before, if you, can't, if you can't get your palm down, that's fine. Do the best you can. Um, you can always come a little bit more forward. OK? All right, thank you so much. Well done. All right, so low back issues. Anyone here have low back problems? Wow. Wow. OK. Um, has anyone here had a major accident? You don't have to tell me what it is, but a major accident that caused your low back issue? No. Chainsaw. <laughs> Chainsaw. Yeah. Um, you don't count? I'm just kidding. Love you. It's a different type of pain. Um, if you've had a major trauma, then it's kind of different. Um, most of it is just from sitting for long periods of time. And I'm going to use something, a word called flexion. So this is my hip joint. This is flexion. My knees are bent. And when I'm walking or running, this is extension. All right, so knee in 90 degree. Um, Flexion, knee past midpoint is extension. So most of your day, you're spending seated in flexion, which is tough on your low back because you don't get the, the movement of a certain muscle <coughs> called your psoas, which is right here. So it's, here's your low, your, um, your lumbar spine, so the last five vertebrae of your spine, and then it's attached to your femur, so your, your upper leg bone. So that muscle is constantly in, also in flexion and, com and kind of compressed. So it's never getting this full range of motion, which is very important. <clears throat> so the simplest, so going back to that, is your low back pain most of the time, I'm not going to project here, but most of the time is due to um, just being seated. It's not really due to any kind of major trauma. And 
it will cause quite a bit of um, discomfort. So if I can get someone to be a volunteer. Yeah. What's that? Uh, not terribly. Oh, come on. All right. So again, if you're on a rolly chair, just be aware of what you're doing. But it's really basic. All you're going to do is sit side saddle, so to speak, on your chair, and then bring one leg off, keeping the front leg bent. Your back leg will go back into a lunge, and you can just hang out here. So that all you're doing is going into extension. And if it's too much, you can just stay here, right? Because it's better to be going from here to there, OK? I'll show you how that's, don't worry. <laughs> There's no problem. So you're going to be seated. Good. And then all you're going to do is take your right leg back. Perfect. Exactly. And you can just hang out here for a while and make sure that you're breathing. Another add, uh, the other option you can do is bring your right arm up towards the ceiling like this. And then you can do, go into a little bit of side flexion so you get everything. Yeah. Perfect. And hold it for like 30 seconds. Do it both, both sides. You can probably do it more than once throughout your day, I would recommend, especially if you're staying seated for a long period of time. Thank you. Bravo. Ooh, feet. I love feet. Um, more than feet, I love shoes, but I do love feet too. So your feet spend most of, unless you're barefoot at work like this guy, and I hope those are clean. Uh, um, I don't know, hair on feet, no offense, but it's just a little different. Um, <laughs> so, your feet were never really meant to be in shoes for the whole, for the majority of the day. The human body was ideally made for um, climbing and sprinting short distances. Um, as great as shoes can be, especially like running shoes for running, your feet can never really spread out and grip the ground. So what starts to happen is here you have this um, opposition of your hands being very mobile and your feet being stuck in shoes, and the bones never really move. Like you're walking, but you can't really move things around. So it's really important to try and keep dexterity of your feet. I know for me personally, um, uh, playing as much tennis as I did, I'm, I'm constantly, when I was training, my feet were always in shoes. <laughs> and I would have someone have me do foot exercises, and when I was trying to move my feet, I'd be making all sorts of weird faces, because I couldn't actually move one toe at a time. So it's very important to kind of keep uh, the dexterity of your feet and do the best you can. So the, most, the best one I can recommend is mobilizing your feet, uh, mobilizing the bones in your feet with a tennis ball. Um, people might not think that these feet are beautiful or even proper, but these are really good feet. They almost look like hands. Uh, you can tell this person <coughs> spends very little, if any, time in shoes. Not because of their great tan, but just because their toes are so wide. Um, so really, the goal is to create a wider base of support. Your feet are what take you to and from places. If you don't have a wide support, your balance is off. And really, um, if anyone knows anything about like reflexology, Everything in your feet is connected to everything in your body. Um, so I think we have quite a bit of time, which is great. Anyone um, here have clean feet? Besides me, I literally just got out of the shower uh, and want to do this next exercise. Nick Duval? Oh my goodness. Come on up. So. <clears throat> I'm going to do it with you. Here, take your shoe off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, socks off. So this one I actually recommend doing at home, ideally. That you don't have to do it at work, especially if you get really sweaty, gnarly feet. You don't. You beautiful feet. OK, so I'll go through it very quickly. And if anyone has any um, questions, please ask me, you can stop me in the hall and be like, can you show me how to do that? Or can you tell me how to breathe, whatever. <clears throat> so you're going to start with the ball. If, if you're looking at my hand, I'm going to try and make it the same. So 
So your foot's like this. You have an arch. You're going to start towards the front of your arch, just behind your first metatarsal or knuckle. And so when you look down, you're going to see a sliver of the ball on the inside. And I'm actually wearing I can do that. So like that. <laughs> so, and then bring your left foot forward. Good. So it, can you see a sliver of the ball when you look down? You can? Excellent. And so you're just going to stay here for about 30 seconds. The idea is to release your weight into the ball, not to uh, kind of hang out on one leg. <coughs> Excuse me. So what should happen is your knuckles should start to kind of pop through the skin. And uh, I know that he's queasy, so that's why I'm having you do it. Yay. Uh, and then next step is that you're going to roll from side to side, watching your knuckles pop through the skin as you go from side to side. I'm going to try and make it as gross as possible and as uncomfortable as possible for you. And then so it's just this little windshield wiper motion from side to side. And the same thing, just so make sure your heel doesn't move. You're just going side to side with your foot, exactly, and relaxing your toes all the way down. And now I'm getting, I'm moving too much. All right, and then you're going to come back to the back of your arch, which is right before your heel. Same thing, you're going to look down so you can see a sliver of the ball. <coughs> and make sure that your other leg is so you're directly standing. Woo. Good. And then giving your weight to the ball, you're going to think about dropping your heel down behind the ball, but keeping your toes on the ground. And so giving as much weight as you can. How's that? Yeah? And again, so staying here for about 20 seconds. Then you're going to come all the way back right underneath your heel, like you're wearing um, stilettos. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, round, yeah. Well, you want, you want to think about it like if it's base of your heel, it's like literally right in the center. And again, giving your, giving your weight to the ball and then just going side to side, little windshield wipers. And then um, I always talk about toes as rays. So you have your first ray, which is your big toe, and your fifth ray, which is your pinky toe. So you'll start at your pinky toe. So starting at your pinky toe, and then you're going to roll all the way to your heel. Sorry. So, I'm sorry, and lose, and lose your balls. And then going from your fourth, fourth ray to your heel, third ray to your heel, and pressing down. <laughs> you should try it. It's really a lot harder than it seems. <laughs> <laughs> and, and think about when you're doing this, you're not thinking about actually massaging your feet. You're thinking about massaging the ball. So that's how much pressure you're using. And you're going to go super, super hard. And then when you're done, you come off and stand on a flat surface. And you can come off it. And ideally, his other foot would be showing, but you can probably feel a difference. Feet should feel wider, um, a little bit looser, and you might notice a difference in color, as well as, um, <coughs> excuse me, your knuckles might be a little bit more towards the surface. Uh, especially for females when you're wearing heels, or males, doesn't matter. But um, usually what will happen is your metatarsals will drop. It's very uncomfortable. A lot of dancers have this issue. So it's very good to mobilize your bones and think about moving them in the opposite direction. Thank you. Well done. Yay, Nick. Shoes. <clears throat> um, so if I can give some extra kind of tips or bonus tips um, as an overall wellness and taking care of yourself throughout the day, especially when you're at work, I always recommend to people um, when you wake up, drink two cups of water, and, and water, not coffee. As much as I love coffee, but uh, when you're, if you sleep, hopefully if you're sleeping for eight hours a night, I know most people don't, um, it's important because you're, you actually will get slightly dehydrated, you will lose water, and your body is mostly about 70% water, uh, give or take a couple there. It's really important to keep mucous membranes hydrated um, and just keep fluid in your body. The other thing I would recommend is to just stay hydrated throughout the day. If you're going to drink coffee, you have to drink a little bit more water. Um, don't overdo it. <clears throat> I never recommend um, just drinking as much water as possible, but most people will drink less water than they need. So the formula that you can use is your weight divided by two, excuse me, and that is the number of ounces of water that you should drink per day. I would say a, gr a good average is three to four liters, excuse me, or a, a gallon. And then the other thing I can really recommend is walking 20 minutes a day, especially if you do spend most of your day seated. Do it in the beginning. Get it out of the way. 
uh, gets your heart going, so it's good for your heart, you're taking care of your own body, um, but also really important for mental stimulation. So it's because you're getting the blood flowing and everything's moving, then when you, can, when you get to your desk and you're starting to do your work, um, things will be a little bit clearer, you'll get your energy, your energy will be higher throughout the day, and 20 minutes is not that much. It also can be time for yourself where you can think about things that you need to do that day, and just, it's important also to do things for yourself. Um, so we're actually good on time, I can't believe that. So if anyone has any questions, please. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think that's better. Uh, I think it's just, if you can, if you can do the, the thing with the tennis ball, and the other thing I meant to say is, if anyone here has plantar fasciitis? Does, you do, okay. You actually don't wanna use uh, the tennis ball. What it is is an issue with your flexors. So you, what you wanna do is, you wanna um, get your knuckles up against a wall, and toes are gonna be up, and then slide your knuckles all the way down, and just stretch out your flexors. And I'd say hold it for 15 seconds. It's gonna be very intense. Make sure that you breathe, of course. When you hold your breath, you'll feel more pain. The more you can breathe, the more the pain will go away. Um, but going back to um, being in sandals, I think that's better. Uh, bare feet is ideal, because then your feet can really spread out without, if, you, if your feet hit the ground in a funny angle, whether you're supinated or pronated. Um, so supination is walking more towards the outside of your foot. Pronation is where your ankle's coming more towards the, in, the inside. Um, you know, your shoes will wear in that way. So I think it's better if you can really get your feet flat on the ground, do a couple exercises, and then um, just even just moving your feet around, I think is good. Anyone else? Yes? Uh, what sort of like extracurricular activities? What sort of extracurricular activities are good for somebody who spends a lot of time at a desk? Like, like I bike, I snowboard, different things, but like, is there any like ideal types of just like exercise or movements, you know, that, that aren't just like rolling a tennis ball around. Like, yes. what can I do that's fun? What, what that, can you that do that's can, fun? That, that'll contribute that's to. Fun? <laughs> that's not fun? Yeah. No, um, I think uh, anything where, you know, really I encourage movement. Um, and what does that mean? If you want to go and play a pickup game of basketball, that's phenomenal. Uh, running, walking. Um, Anything that you can do with your friends, playing frisbee. I mean, simple things. I like things where maybe, okay, yeah, I said 20 minutes of walking, but if you can do something with somebody else, where it's like you're running and catching and you're using a different part of your mind, um, and you're also just working on coordination, which is always important. As you get older, you start to get a little slower, you start to lose the, the coordination. It's really important to keep moving. That's one thing I can always recommend is, doesn't matter how old you are, just don't stop. Because the moment that you stop, things start to happen. Your body just slows down. Um, I've seen it happen a lot. So, Hey, you know, we fit. I don't, we have a neighbor that does it. I don't recommend doing it in a third floor attic apartment when you're about <laughs> <laughs> running in place and the house feels like it's about to fall down. But um, yeah, and I also recommend getting outdoors. Get outdoors. Uh, if you have a dog, walk your dog. Um, yeah. Yeah, really. I mean, I'm not saying that you have to go out and train for a triathlon or a New York City Marathon. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is just be a little bit more active. D dedicate 20 minutes of your day to doing something other than sitting down. Okay? If you need to go and be a, a mall walker, you can do that too. But, um, yeah. So it's like basically the more active, the more active you want to be uh, in, what, in what sense? Yes. Is there anything that I might do that I might need to be a little more careful that you know maybe it's not going to be on? I would think for any early adopters, that is for. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not like you're. I, I would say if you're a butcher and you're swinging a machete all day or something, then you'd have to be something really to be worried about as far as danger. Um, I just say become aware of what your habits are, the slouching, the not refocusing the eyes, those are the main things, and overuse of the hands, so just doing those basic stretches that don't take very much time. Uh, as far as danger, I wouldn't really call it danger, uh, dangerous, so. Sorry, someone else had, yes? 
Mm-hmm. Last year, I saw lower back, back pain due to injury. Yes. What would be different about that? Oh, very different. Like if you had a herniated disc, let's say, um, I wouldn't recommend going into flexion of your spine, something like this. Most disc herniations are posterior, meaning they come out the back. It's very rare that you have an anterior uh, disc herniation, something that's forward, so you wouldn't do an extension. So someone who has a disc herniation, I would encourage either laying, laying up on your stomach on the floor, propping yourself up on your elbows, and looking up, and then just doing that a couple of times. Nothing really major. Uh, it depends what your, your issue is. Um, I just notice more often than not, it's a psoas issue. It's a, it's a hip flexor issue than actual um, spinal issue when you're talking about the back. Anyone? Yes? Yeah, the physio ball. I think those are great because it kind of, you're sitting on an unstable surface, so you have to kind of figure out. Is it on wheels or it's just of the ball? Oh, I think that's the best. Um, yeah, you can call it a yoga ball or physio ball or Swiss ball. I think those are great just because Anytime you're on an unstable surface, you have to figure out how to balance. Can that help with the it can. I mean, you still have to be aware of it and be aware of your breathing because you can still sit on a ball and just be like that, right? And so, if, so the thing is, if you notice that you're like that, don't judge it. Don't don't get mad at yourself. Just be like, okay, so I'm gonna just kind of like stack my head over my rib cage, rib cage over my pelvis, right? And and that's fine. Those are, I like those things. They're fun. Plus, you can bounce around. It's fun. You know, you feel like a kid. Yes. So what can you do to correct the slouching? Correct the slouching. Um, I would just, I always recommend that kind of once you notice what's happening, be like, okay, I'm gonna come back. And the more you notice it, the more you'll notice it. So it's like the more you do something, the more, the easier it becomes. Um, so if you have this little slouching issue, then I would always recommend breathing, always. Uh, just be, come back to your breath and just take, you can take literally one minute to just be like, okay, I'm not, during this one minute, I'm not gonna make a sound on my inhale, but I'm gonna t try and take the biggest inhale I can. It might sound totally ridiculous, but it works, and I see it all the time. Um, it also gives you time to slow down on what you're thinking. Sometimes when you're, most people here, I would say almost everyone here is very intellectual. Sometimes your mind is just constantly running, constantly running, and I know like in Buddhism, it's all about how you can quiet your mind and also not judge your thoughts. Um, so that's what I would recommend, is just to become more aware. Uh, the other thing I want to recommend for carpal tunnel is uh, some people who are in design is the, right, the tablet, because your hand is not like this. Your, your hand's a little bit more open. So if you're using the tablet, those are great. Um, if you don't want to go into that, just make sure you stretch your hands out. Yes? I actually had two things. First of all, to kind of answer his question about dangerous exercises. Yeah. Um, I would say avoid anything that's going to put you into the same position you are during the day. Um, so like if you're gonna, if you are, are always have your hands clawed up because you're on a keyboard or a blackberry or something, mm -hmm. maybe you don't want to play tennis because it's gonna put your hand in that closed position again. Mm -hmm. Just that kind of thing. And then my actual question was, kind of goes with his, um, you showed us a very complicated neck stretching exercise yes. that I have no chance of ever okay. doing. Do you have any other exercises? I do, I do. So then the next one I would have is, um, does anyone want a demo? Yeah, you can do it. Come on. <laughs> so this one I like. Um, I didn't have enough, I didn't feel like, think I would have enough time, but you're gonna sit sideways again. And the idea is to keep whichever hand, uh, whichever arm is closer to your desk on the desk and, let, and give the full weight of that arm. And then really simply, you're just gonna drop your ear to the side. And what you're doing is you're stretching your scalenes, which a lot of times people are really tense. Their shoulders start to rise up and you start to kind of wear your shoulders from your neck. <clears throat> and then you're gonna do a little rotation. So from here, all you're gonna do is right ear goes to shoulder and think about and relaxing your left shoulder as much as you can. There you go. So, so how does that feel? A little bit. Yeah. And then the, the next part is you're gonna turn and look just, so keeping your head in the same position, all you're doing is turning and looking down to your right. So now you're getting more towards the back. And keep your head forward just a smidge yeah, there. And then all you're gonna do is, eyes are gonna trace up the wall, and you're gonna look up to your left, exactly. Well, that's good. And so now you're stretching the front of your neck, and then you just hold it and make sure, yeah. 
Do you feel that? Yeah. Okay, so it's, yeah. That's, that's another one I can recommend. I didn't think I was gonna have enough time to get into that, but yeah, thank you, excellent. Um, anyone else? Yes? More hand and arm wise. Um, Mm -hmm. Sorry, hand and arm, uh, especially you know finger, hand and arm kind of exercises. Like I've trained myself to, to move around. Mm -hmm. um, I arrange to have my desk as far away from the printer as possible and That's all good. those I usual like tricks. Uh -huh. uh, but more what I find is because I'm making my body move around, but my arms aren't. You know, apart okay. from doing like a Sesame Street kind of swinging my arms when I walk, which mm -hmm. I looks that. interesting, but yeah, I want that. Nice, um, <clears throat> thanks, Ted. Um, the other one I would recommend is um, you can do it lying down. And really all it is is a nerve stretch. Are you going to come demo? Yeah. Yes, you will. Um, so this is a nerve stretch. And you're going to lie down on the ground. I think it's clean. Yeah. And knees are going to be bent, feet flat on the floor. And your hands are going to come together, like in this kind of prayer position. And you're going to move just in this plane of motion. So your fingers are going to come together base of your hand come together, and then you're gonna like flower your fingers out towards the side. So super, super straight arms, long arms, and then you go out to the side like this, and then fingertips are gonna touch the ground, and then scoop around, yeah? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. and then you're gonna scoop around. The idea is to keep it moving, because you are stretching nerves, you don't wanna keep anything pinched. So fingertips come together, come soft. You're gonna do it with me, and then hands come together, fingertips come out, and then go out, come soft, come soft, come soft, come soft. Scoop, you're gonna fingertips scratch the floor, and then curl towards each other. And so you can just do this like three or four times, keeping everything moving. Do you feel that here? Oh, yeah. yeah. So the idea is a lot of times people, they're for, there's also forward shoulder syndrome. I could stay here for four hours and talk about stuff. So your shoulders kind of come forward like this. The idea is to keep this moving. Help? No? You good? Okay, good. So that I think is good to keep yeah, your whole arm moving. You feel it back here? Yeah. Nerves. Here. Yeah. So you have, it's called a brachial plexus. Starts at the base of your skull, comes all the way underneath your collarbone all the way down. So it's like this, your nerves are just keeping a nerve stretch moving, but yet you're moving your arms. Anything else? Yes? Where can we get more information? Is there like a website we can go to for? Uh, I can email you. Okay. Uh, as far as exercises or as far as just general knowledge? Uh, both. Both? Uh, moi. Okay. I mean, it's not that I, I know everything, but it's just I just do very, very different. Um, exercises, most of all, thanks to my, my Pilates teacher, Kwan Hui Chu, who's a, a dancer, dancer choreographer. I never thought I would use a jerky voice line, but yes. She's a dancer choreographer and a professional dancer. So she spent a lot of time um, kind of working with us, and I work with her quite a bit. So that's where all these kind of funky things come from. Anyone else? Questions? No? Yes? TMJ, so TMJ is that, when I was talking about the um, deep front line, that's TMJ. Um, can I get back to you on that? Because I'd have to make, uh, the one that I did that was on the chair is great for opening up this deep front line. Um, <clears throat> I can, I'd have to just give me five minutes to modify that and make it happen. The one on the chair where your arms are in a 90 degrees and then you're sitting like in this tabletop. Just holding it there for some people can be a little intense. Dropping the pelvis is just the added, you're coming into this extension, right, like this. So you're not like, come sa, you're opening up this deep front line. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Anyone? No? All right. Thank you so much for coming, appreciate it.